Dreams think that you would be in this position with him on the first Tuesday in November? Of course I did, yes. <laughs> no way, mate. I don't detect a tear, do I? No, that was last year. I didn't have enough on. The Cup's King has done it again. From light fingers in 1965 to perhaps his greatest training feat and victory number 11 on Tuesday with Rogan Josh. A seven-year-old flyer who came from the clouds to add new spots to the greatest prize in Australian racing and complete a fairy tale story. Day, the third day of an extraordinary week. A day when the ladies of the fields and of the turf take centre stage. It's a day when the fashions and the fillings reach new heights. And where the full spirit of the Melbourne Cup Carnival takes a new turn. From racing thoroughbreds to racing hearts. begin. Welcome to the 1999 Melbourne Cup Carnival, live and exclusive to Network 10. Away they go, the gates have crashed back and the big one is underway. As they come down the straight the first time. Good morning and welcome back to Melbourne's Flemington Racecourse, the home of the Foster's Melbourne Cup. Through these very gates two days ago, jockey Johnny Marshall brought Rogan Josh back to scale to the roar of a crowd of over 100,000 people after winning, of course, the Melbourne Cup. And the 11th time the gold three-handled Loving Cup has gone to trainer Bart Cummings. Well, today it's Crown Oaks Day, a day for the fillies. On the track, our feature race this afternoon is the Crown Oaks at 2.45 for three-year-old fillies. Off the track, it's Ladies' Day, a day of stylish fashion, and we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Weather-wise, the forecast, as you can see, it's living up to expectations. Glorious day ahead, a top temperature of 27 degrees. Well, there's a lot going on today, and our first race is about 15 minutes away, so to get things underway, Let's cross now to our racing panel and Peter Donegan. Good morning, Peter. I'm told you're meant to be the man at the helm, but somehow with that crowd, I don't know if you're really in charge. How could I possibly be in control of this lot, Sandra Sally? But I'll try and keep them under control and I'll try and find a few winners along with our experts throughout the day. And good morning, everyone, on this delightful Crown Oaks Day of 1999. We have a wonderful program in front of us. It all begins at 20 minutes past 11, so in just over 15 minutes from now, it will kick off with the Toyota Victoria Stakes. And uh, then we'll go right through until the Women's Day Cup at 4.45. And in between, we've got some great racing, including the big two, the Crown Oaks Race 6, Group 1 at 2.45, and the Emirates Classic over 1,200 metres at five minutes after four. Great program in front of us today here on Oaks Day. Why don't we check the scratchings for the card now, the all-important scratchings, and they're fairly light on for the day. The first event, there's only one withdrawal, and that is number 17, Fra Rina from the Toyota Victoria Stakes. No riding changes, 16 running. Race two, the Siemens Mobile Stakes is clear, a field of 10, no riding changes. The third, the Moat and Chandon at 12.40, take out 10, Gentle Call, 18, Citronella and 19, Perforated. And the rider for number 16, Amnesia, is Greg Hall, 16 running in the third. Race four, the Meyer Plate for the Greys. And there are 10 of them, no scratchings, no riding changes. Race five, the Cadbury Roses Stakes at 2 o'clock, scratchings are number 10, K Kalani. 13 Mirakesh, 17 Chalet Amir, and 19 Sacred Model. Rider for 18 Arctic Bite is Aaron Spateri, 15 running. Big one of the day, the VRC Crown Oaks Race 6, Group 1 at 2.45, Eastern Daylight Saving Time. No scratchings. Important riding change, number 9, Beat the Fate is now Brett Preble, replacing Mick Dittman, 11 running. Race 7, the Chadston Fashion Plate at 3.25. 
take out four Joe Bananas and 12 Matt Starr, four and 12. Seven Coup de Gras, the rider is Eddie Wilkinson. 13 Trebeal, the rider is Stephen Arnold, 16 to run. Race 8, the Emirates Classic at 5 past 4. Two scratchings from this small field. 7, Fapiano's son and 8, Cullen. No riding changes, a field of 8 only. And race 9, the Women's Day Cup is clear of scratchings. There are no riding changes and we have a field of 15 to face the starter. Big one of the day is the Crown Oaks and you can see my Sienna, hasn't it come up short? Well, that's a ridiculous crate at the moment and uh, it will definitely blow out. Dan Gliss has come up four to one and my Sienna's come up six to four as far as super tab dividends are concerned. So it's five dollars for Dan Gliss, at two fifty for my Sienna, fifteen Shazoo, thirty seven Smites's rivalry, five seventy for the Golden Dane. Big odds about the rest of them. Normandy, Dane Tallake, Madame Plume beat the fade. Tributes at $10, the Oaks Trail winner, and Shamaro is at 137 Now the first, that's coming up in 14 minutes' time, and the main chances here are number two, undercover, Craig Williams Mount, at $7.30 for Robbie Smurton. Number four is Bro Mister, $9.60. And then we go down to eight, Miss Denmark, $11.30, nine, Queen, uh, which comes out of the Friedman Yard, is uh, also well in contention at $6.60. Thank you, Jennifer. The favourite is Tennessee Midnight, number 11, which is having its first start today and is from David Hall. Well, he could try anything at present, $3.70 and $1.70, and Foxtrot at $6.70 and $2.20. They're the opening figures for the first coming up in around about 14 minutes time. We're going to have a huge crowd here today. There are going to be many people out on the lawns enjoying champagne. There are going to be a lot of people in the betting ring as well with a flurry of activity going on throughout the day and there with them will be the man who has his finger on the pulse. Tim Gossage, good morning to you, Timothy. Yeah, good morning, Peter, and good morning, everybody. Yes, well, they say Cup Day was fairly quiet, the bookmakers. Right. There wasn't a great deal of money for a lot of things in the Cup, in particular, late speaking for Rogan Josh. But as you said, My Siena has also opened up very short in the bookmakers' ring in pre-Oaks betting. I tell you what, though, the first race, it is Tennessee Midnight. It is the Hall Preble combination that everyone is talking about. I'll keep you up to date with all the betting plungers here in the ring. But before I go, how's this for a lucky punter? Here's Gareth Hunter from Brisbane. Now, Gareth is at Oaks Day meeting today. Gareth won a competition with Darwin All Sports to bet $50,000 on the Oaks Day meeting. How did you do that? I don't know. I'm a rugby league man, so pretty good in the AFL comp. Yeah, so you won an AFL tipping competition. The rules are that Gareth must have a bet in every race, $5,000 minimum and $10,000 maximum. You really can't go home a loser. Yeah, well, I certainly hope not. What do you like in the first end? What's your investment in race one? Uh, I've just gone straight out in the favourite here. Obviously, don't know with these uh, first starters, so just straight out in the first. Five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars on Tennessee Midnight. Well, good luck today, Gareth. Thank you. Gareth Hunter, a Brisbane Uni student who rides a bike. His aim is to buy enough, have enough at the end of the day to own a car. Well, Pete, not a bad start. Fifty grand for nothing. Yeah, it's terrific, Tim, and I notice you've latched onto him straight away too. <laughs> Uh, good on you, Tim Gossage, <laughs> down in the betting ring. And uh, Tim will be keeping us up to date with everything that's going on and also how Gareth is progressing throughout the day. We wish you luck. We've got a great day in front of us. We're going to go to our first break. And as we do, we'll see what Milton Black's got to say about Oaks Day 1999. You're watching the third day of the Melbourne Cup Carnival, live and exclusive around Australia and in many parts of the world on Network 10.
connection's got a decent off right there. Frankie Dettori after his win on La Zofany on Melbourne Cup Day. And what he did, they gave him the champagne and he was uncorking it. And he said, I'm going to spray the media. And they're all standing there in front of him. And he's turned around and got the connection. <laughs> Beautifully Fantastic. done. Yeah, it was a great moment here at uh, Flemington on Tuesday. All right, time to have a look at the big race of the day. The VRC Crown Oaks. It is race number six on the card. Some classy fillies in this race. Our first replay is of the traditional lead up. Ten of the past 20 winners of the Wakeful Stakes have gone on to win the Crown Oaks. I think it might be 11 of 21 after today because My Sienna Rich was the winner. But your filly, the Golden Dane, who is in the dark colours about three out from the row, was a pretty good run. Wasn't a bad run. She got knocked uh, off her stride on the corner and she looks awkward galloping there. And she never really got on stride again until the last little bit and you see her make a bit of ground. But the other two fillies on the rail have raced away. That's uh, Dan Glisser and here comes My Sienna in the blue colours just to gather them all in. She probably stayed as well as anything in the race, My Sienna. Very hard to beat. Yeah, that's the query with a lot of these horses, isn't it, Jen? That we just don't know whether they're going to get 2,500 metres. But the way My Sienna went to the line, I think she will. Yes, it does look like she will, Peter, yeah. that's, that's for sure. I thought Dan Gliss's run was OK. She pulled a, a little bit early there and she seemed to have every chance, but she's, she's the horse with the class in the race, that's the big thing. She is, Johnny Letts, but she won't want to pull over 2,500 metres today, will she? No, she won't want to, Pete. And I watched her work the other morning on the, uh, on the television and she was hanging out. A bit and went through her mouth the yeah, other morning. a bit went through her mouth the other morning and yeah. this is a trait she's got. She doesn't seem to be able to get on the right leg down here. Well, what did you come up with, Jen? Well, I'm going to go for Dan Glisser, Peter. I, I thought uh, she, you know, because she's got the class, I think she might get herself through here. Uh, I'll put in number two, My Sienna, for second. I'd love to see her win for the Buckingham family. And number five, the Golden Dane, for third. My roughie is number three, Shazoo. Yeah, I'd venture to say that uh, the emotions will be running high if My Sienna does win. What about you, Rich? Well, I'm going to stick with it with our stable, a bit parochial here, and uh, go with the Golden Dane. I thought she, she will stay the trip. Um, I'm going with Dan Glisser to run second. You can't really fall to her form as long as she does everything right. My Sienna, she did everything right last Saturday. Can't, can't really split the three, really. But uh, tributes would be my outsider, number two. Let's see. Well, I have stuck with JB coming to beat the fade. And uh, interesting to note that Brett Preble will ride beat the fade, mm -hmm. not Mick Dippman. Um, I do like beat the fade. Only a length and a half behind the good fillies at Caulfield. Dan Glish had a run second, My Sienna third, and the Golden Dane, I think, is in there with a great chance. Well, as I said, I've gone for My Sienna because of the way she finished off her race the other day. Dan Glisser is the class. Quite often the class filly will win the Oaks. She'll be thereabouts when the uh, whips are cracking, no doubt about that. And the Golden Dane's run was good enough in the Wakeful to suggest that she might fill the trifecta. And like Johnny Letts, I thought Beat the Fade didn't have a lot of luck. Didn't see a fair bit of the uh, aluminium on Saturday in the Wakeful Stakes was three deep. Just ended the run in the last bit, but uh, probably should be better for that effort. Well, candidates are on their way to the gates for the running of the first here at Flemington on Crown VRC Oaks Day. It is the Toyota Victoria Stakes. It's a listed race over 1,000 metres. And there is the beautiful scene. Look at this weather. This is just a replica. In fact, probably a little bit warmer than it was at this stage on uh, Melbourne Cup Day. And now the Quadrilla selections. This is from the experts. This is combining all of our tips. And uh, on Saturday, we managed to get the Quadrilla for uh, $180 and it paid 11500 So there you go. It's three by three by six by four. And uh, someone, one of our mathematicians here, either Jen, Richard or Letty, will be able to work out just exactly how much that is. Well, I know that we actually picked the pick six on Saturday too. Pete, with our selection, paid 66000 It did indeed. We had to outlay a bit of money to get it. There's the Ron Hutchinson Excellence Award. And this award every year is for the riding performance of the carnival. And John Marshall, no doubt, is the top point scorer at the moment after that terrific ride from Gate 21 on Rogan Josh in the Melbourne Cup. And uh, he's got a stranglehold on it at the moment. Greg Childs, Greg Hall, Jim Collett, Darren Gatchy and Eddie Wilkinson might be having something to say about that.